Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm going to show you how I made this cool little pocket dump tray with two epoxy rivers. I started off with some of this spalted, I believe it's either maple or sweet gum that I got from Jay's. And we had milled down a couple of the crotch pieces and I wanted to use the live edge side of two of the pieces. Along with a smaller piece that I had to remove the bark from as a center section now I had to flatten off some of the corners and stuff like that to get it to lay flat in the mold so I used a hand plane and then I started to cut them down on the miter saw so I could build the mold around the pieces. The point was to get the ends of each of the boards as flat and even as possible that way when I laid the sides of the mold against them it would seal tight and I wouldn't have to use a bunch of extra epoxy. After getting them cut to the size, I used a Dremel tool and some sandpaper to remove some of the excess bark and residue on the live edges. And this would just make sure that there was good adhesion of the epoxy after I poured the rivers. I also made sure after doing all the sanding and everything to brush down the live edges just to get off all the sanding residue and this is just a really good idea to help everything stick together and keep the pour a lot cleaner and make things come out a little better in the end. Now after that I wanted to coat the live edge sides with some total boat varnish and it's just a sealer usually you use some more epoxy but I decided to use the varnish and just kind of see if that worked for what I was wanting and it seemed to do okay. Also don't be afraid to put multiple coats this just helps keep debris and air from coming off or out of the wood into your epoxy. With the pieces all prepped it was time to get the mold ready. I was using some melamine and I always cover all of the surfaces of the inside of the mold with packing tape and this just helps the epoxy to release a little better on any surfaces that it's touching inside the mold. After the mold was all taped up, I went ahead and screwed on the first wall and I added a bead of caulking on the inside. Now this is just to keep the epoxy from leaking out or anything like that. And it's easiest to me just to put it inside the seam and a little bit on the corner of the inside of the mold. With the actual pieces of the board, I lay down masking tape on the bottom side so I can add a bead of sealer around each one. Now this will stop epoxy from going underneath the boards. And also if you use a good type of caulking, it will actually hold these smaller pieces down to the mold. So you don't have to worry as much about clamping them into place. And also the tape helps make it easier to remove the caulking from the back of the board once you're demolding everything. With all the pieces in place just go ahead and put the last wall on, screw it into place just like you did the first one with a bead of caulking and then spread caulking over any seam where epoxy could leak out. Then you go ahead and get ready to mix your epoxy. For this I am using the KP Pigments Bora Bora and Mineral Glacier I believe it is to get this really beautiful blue color. Now, as you can see, there's caulking on the inside of this, so you make this entire board a little oversized so you can remove some on the ends, and this makes it just easier and cleaner so you don't have any epoxy leak out the ends. When you're doing the pour for this, though, just take your time and pour it slowly, and it should push most of the air out. Another good tip that I honestly didn't do this time is to use a small pocket torch to pop any micro bubbles as you're pouring the epoxy into the mold. Before I was finished pouring, I actually went and added a couple of beads on each seam at the top of caulking. And this was just so I could completely fill up the rivers and not just spill over across all the boards. After letting it sit for just a little bit, I went back and popped all the bubbles that were coming up into the epoxy with a torch and use a bamboo skewer to actually try to put a um, pattern in the epoxy. Depending on what epoxy you're using, this will be done at a different time during the set period, but after you get the pattern you want, let the epoxy fully cure before you try to remove the mold. Once 
once all the screws are removed from the mold, just use a mallet and pop off the sides. And then you can use a, a chisel or small pry bar and it should just pop right off the bottom of the mold. Once it's out of the mold, try to remove as much of the tape and caulking as you can before moving on to the next process as it will dirty up any kind of milling bits or machinery that you use. And I went ahead and rough shaped it on the miter saw just so I wasn't milling down a larger set of material for no reason. After it was cut down, I went ahead and threw on the white side four blade spillboard bit onto my router plane jig and milled it down pretty close to its final size that I was going to use, which was going to be right around one inch. This white side spillboard bit that I got from Bits and Bits went through this like butter and made amazingly clean cuts, so it made cleanup and finishing much easier. With the board milled down to pretty much its final thickness and shape, now I can head inside and jump on SketchUp and figure out how I want to lay out the pockets to put them in V-Carve and cut it out on the CNC. So let's go inside and get on SketchUp. First thing you want to do is go to Camera, Standard Views, Top. This will give you a top-down view of your work area. So we need an 8 by 11 inch rectangle. So you hit R for rectangle, click on the origin here, and just drag out, and then type in 11, 8, enter. And as you can see, that gives us this 11 inch wide by 8 inch tall uh, rectangle. Now we're not going to actually add any thickness as of yet. We're first going to draw in our pockets and all of our stuff like that, which will just make it easier down the line. So what I want to do first is actually offset this outer border to give me a quarter inch bezel all the way around everything in the tray. So you hit F for offset and then click on that top edge and just drag in. As you'll see, there is a trying or a, excuse me, a rectangle that comes up and you just type in 0.25 enter. Now this will bring another rectangle down a quarter inch all the way around. So now that we have our outer bezel set, the first thing we want to do is draw our first pocket. Now the first pocket will be this pocket on the right hand side. It will be one inch wide and be the width, or excuse me, one inch, I guess, width. And the length will be the entire length of this inner rectangle. So you type, hit R for rectangle, click on this upper right hand corner. Just drag all the way down and it will snap to the line. So as you can see in the little dimensions box, it's seven and a half inches tall. So we're going to type 7.5 comma one enter. And this will give you a seven inch tall by one inch wide pocket. And this will be our first pocket that we've drawn. From here, I want there to be a quarter inch bezel like on the outside between every pocket. So what we're gonna do is actually mark out some markers just to make that a little easier. So the first thing I want to do is zoom in, hit T for tape measure, go to this intersection here of the inner line of the first pocket, click on it and drag along the upper line and type 0.25 enter. And as you can see, it gets this little um, mark here, this little cross. And from here to here is exactly one quarter inch. So what we want to do is actually repeat this process down on the lower line, we want to hit T for tape, click on the intersection, drag along this line, 0.25, enter, and then that gives us this second mark at the bottom. Now from here, what we want to do is actually draw our top uh, pocket, and this pocket, you already know the size, or at least the height of the pocket. So we click R for rectangle, click on the upper left hand, corner drag it out till it clicks to the mark that you just made with the tape measure as you'll see in the dimensions it's nine and a quarter inches so i know that i want this pocket three and a half inches tall so we type in 9.25 comma three enter and as you can see there's our first pocket our second pocket excuse me and What's nice from here is to do the same thing as we did before, T for tape measure, but you're going to do this um, intersection of the second pocket. And then you're just going to drag down, type 0.25, enter, 
and now you have this mark here. So these two guides make it to where it is super simple to draw your last triangle and you wind up with a perfect quarter inch bezel all the way around each one. So hit space to go back to cursor, R for rectangle, and just click down on the bottom here and just drag up to the second point and then click. As you can see, you have a perfect quarter inch bezel all the way around. Now from here, you wanna hit the space bar back to your cursor and we wanna remove these lines here. So this is one piece. This entire bezel will be one piece of the tray. So just click on the line, hit delete, and that's gonna remove your mark that you made with your tape. And then click on the line again and hit delete. And this will open up this section here to add it to the outer bezel. From there, you wanna do that on all of the pieces here. So you've got three in all. So you're gonna click on this line, hit delete, click again, delete. Same thing for the bottom. Zoom in, click delete, click delete. All right, so now we've got all of our pockets drawn. So the easiest thing from here, as far as getting your height, we know that the thickness of our board is going to be one inch total and that the depth of the cuts is going to be a half inch. So you hit P for push pull and then click on this outer bezel, drag up and then type in 0.5 enter. Oh, excuse me. Click P for push pull, drag up and then type one enter. Now this will give you a one inch height of your bezel. From there, remain on the push pull tool and click the bottom of each pocket, drag up and then type in 0.5 enter. And this will give you a half inch depth of each pocket. Click the space bar and as you can see, there is our completed cutout for the board. Now from here, what we're gonna do is send this to Vetric and use it in VCarve. And we're actually gonna add a radius to our corners in VCarve and set our tool paths for the CNC. So All right, now that we have VCarve open, the first thing you need to do is set your job size or your work area. So it's eight inches by 11 inches by one inch. And this is just pretty much our work area, the size of our project. Hit OK. And from here, we're going to go to File, Import, Import Vectors. And this is where you're going to open up that SketchUp file that we just completed. So you click on the file you're wanting to open, hit Open and then OK, and then here is all your vectors. Now this comes out as one large vector file, so you gotta change it a little bit, but that's OK. So what we wanna do first is rotate this vector 90 degrees to line up with our work area. So you click on the vector, click rotate, type in 90, enter, and this will bring it up to a 90. And then just close that out. Now from here, I want to go and click on this vector and then you'll see this little square come up grab this corner and just drag it over and it will snap to the corner of your work area so now that it's lined up on our work area we can actually do what changes we need to do uh, before we set our tool paths so first thing i want to do is actually ungroup this so you're going to click on your vector right click ungroup object objects and then just ungroup them back to the original layer. So this will give you all of these as separate vectors. So now you can choose each individual piece on its own. Now from here, one of the easiest things I've found, I wanted a radius on each one of these corners, is to use the fillet tool. So you click on fillet, normal fillet, and then I do, I want it just like this, a quarter inch wide fillet. So with this, all you do from here is, is just click on the corners and click each corner that you would like to have the fillet on. In this case, I want all of the interior pockets to be rounded. And this is, should give a really nice shape with the epoxy rivers that will be through the board I'm making for it. So now that we have all those set, go ahead and hit close. And as you can see, it's pretty much ready to go. The only thing left now is to set your tool paths. So what we're gonna do is go to tool paths, show tool paths tab, 
and then click each one of these vectors while holding the shift key and this will let you select all three of these vectors that will be pockets then click on the pocket toolpath start depth is zero cut depth is 0.25 inches so this will cut a quarter inch deep cut and then i want to use a quarter inch end mill bit on the cnc and we're going to slow the feed rate down as you can see i've got the feed rate at about 30. this is just to try to give it a really really clean cut so there's less cleanup later on and hit calculate and there's our tool paths so as you can see that's how it will cut them out um, this is how the toolpath will actually run to show it so you can make sure this is exactly how you want everything to run out and be shown and that looks pretty good to me so from there we're going to go to the cnc and get the cutting The CNC done a great job and the pockets turned out great, but I decided I wanted to round over the outer corners of the tray, so we went over to the router table and just used some round over jigs and added a half inch radius to the outer corners of the tray. Now I don't know about you, but doing round overs like this on a router table is just the most satisfying thing ever. I don't know what it is about it, but it's just cool to watch a corner of a board go to a perfectly smooth radius. After all the corners were finished up, it was time to get to sanding after filling a few small voids. I decided to use a angle piece for my drill and sanding pads to get this going a little quicker, and then did a lot of hand sanding before finishing with some Danish oil. The Danish oil should add a little bit of protection as this is going to be used to hold keys and change and things like that not only that but it gave a great look the wood darkened up just a little bit and really made the blue of the epoxy river pop after that i marked out all the positions and used some half inch stick on feet to elevate the board a little bit off of whatever it was going to be sitting on it would also give a little bit of a floating effect to the board I'm really happy with how the tray come out and I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and also go give me a follow over on Instagram at JPayne Woodworking. And if you want a more in-depth article about how to do some of the projects I'm doing, head over to my website jpaynewoodworking.com and check out all the stuff that's going on over there. And I'll have links for everything in the description below. And guys, I really appreciate it and we'll see you on the next one.